All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yuxiang Wang. I'm a assistant professor in UC Santa Barbara and a researcher in Amazon. Uh, today, I'm happy to uh, tell you a little bit about differential privacy, differential private machine learning, and in particular, differentially private linear regression. I guess I don't have to motivate uh, privacy uh, given the, all these activities in the past decades, uh, from the Netflix price to the breach of New York City taxi data, and to the more recent event where people connect, uh, um, um, learn the re um, RNN models to people's uh, credit card numbers and social security numbers and so on and so forth. Um, in particular, more recently, this uh, new legislation, GDPR, has um, forced all the data collectors that, uh, in, in the industry to uh, revisit their data policy and come up with new ways to make use of the, their data and share their data for research purposes. So one of the formalism, uh, a formal mathematical definition that was proposed in the past decades and has gained uh, a lot of popularity uh, is uh, differential privacy. So it was proposed in 2006, um, and, and let me try to explain the concept of differential privacy very quickly in just one slide. Uh, suppose we have a data set here, um, and, and well, one of the uh, individual in the data set is Alice, and, and we, we try to do some sort of data analysis on this data set, and, and let's just think that uh, this data analysis is solving a linear regression. And at the end of the day, this algorithm will spit out uh, a, a linear regression coefficients there. Suppose the data set is slightly changed by replacing this person, Alex, Alice, with Bob, um, and the same algorithm would, would end up giving you a different uh, set of linear regression coefficients. So if an adversary who knows everything about Alice and Bob and potentially everything else about the data set, then he should be able to figure out whether uh, it is Alice or Bob uh, or based on whether the coefficients is, is bluish or yellowish. So the idea of differential privacy is to use randomization to create uh, the, the kind of information theoretic hardness uh, so, so no adversary is able to distinguish between two data sets that differs by exactly one, one data point. So by randomizing the, the, the algorithm, uh, we induce distributions of the output, and if the two distributions satisfy uh, um, certain uh, conditions, uh, which we call epsilon delta differential privacy, uh, differential privacy, meaning that the two distributions are very similar to each other in a multiplicative sense with, uh, with epsilon, uh, modulo a small probability of failure delta, then we, uh, then we argue that it's impossible uh, for any adversary to figure out individual information about the data set. So this definition, I think, makes a lot of sense. And there's also a Bayesian interpretation uh, which says that uh, if the adversary has some prior knowledge about uh, Alice and seeing this uh, additional evidence of the released coefficient, we will not change that prior uh, significantly by a factor more than e to, the e to the power of epsilon. All right. So, um, the focus of this talk is going to be on privacy utility trade-off because we, we're never going to get anything for free. Um, uh, the strong privacy protection would come with a cost in terms of the utility, but the shape of privacy utility trade-off curve can be quite different from what's showing on the picture. It might be here, uh, meaning that there could be a, a reasonably strong notion of privacy, uh, strength of privacy in terms of epsilon, while still giving us sufficient utility for using the data set in practice. So in this talk, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna focus on the simplest possible model, uh, the linear regression, and, and, and talk about the effect of specific data sets in, uh, in, in the privacy utility trade-off landscape, and, and how we can make use of this insight to design data adaptive uh, differentially private algorithms, and how uh, they can give us uh, 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 results that are in some sense optimal for every single instance uh, in theory and also in practice. Okay, um, I'll start by talking about linear regression, uh, the, the, the 
same old linear regression uh, without privacy constraints. So even for this model, different people might have very different interpretations. It is like by far, I, I still argue this uh, a lot, it is still by far uh, the most popular and most commonly used data analytical tools for understanding uh, what's going on in the data set. And, and it's often surprisingly more powerful than what people would expect. So, so now I'm, uh, let me like put on my statistics uh, st statistician's hat, and 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 the, the task of a statistician is to infer an uh, underlying parameter of a statistical model based on the data. So let's assume the data is uh, generated by a, by a linear Gaussian model, and linear the task of linear regression is to estimate this theta zero parameter as well as possible, or make hypothesis testing uh, about this uh, theta zero. Um, like suppose I, I, I put on my machine learner's hat um, um, and say that, oh, I don't believe in Gaussian linear model. Um, um, then the task of linear regression can be something else. It can be that uh, maybe all, I w all I'm willing to assume is that the data set is generated IID from some un unknown distribution D, um, then uh, I, I want to find the best linear predictor theta uh, such that it minimizes the expected square loss uh, for a data, data point that's, gen that's drawn from the same distribution in the future, okay? So, so in both settings, um, they are, uh, these, these are like extremely well studied and they are very concrete, uh, very precise lower bounds. Uh, in the linear Gaussian models, we have the uh, old Kramer raw lower bounds, we have the minimax lower bound saying that estimation error has to be greater than something. We also have the predictive uh, lower bound saying that the prediction error in the future must be greater than, than this number. Um, and for the statistical learning setting, it's a little harder to find, but uh, Ohad Shamir had a paper in 2015 uh, showing that when we constrain the, the, uh, the data domain by um, uh, Euclidean boss in terms of this X and this label Y uh, and also the parameter space theta, then we can write down a lower bound. Um, this is also actually like the minimax rate uh, of uh, prediction in terms of the statistical learning setting. Very interestingly, uh, in the non-private setting, there is a single algorithm that's highly adaptive that can achieve simultaneously all the aforementioned lower bounds. So this is the, the ordinary least square algorithm or the empirical risk minimization uh, when, when so sometimes you have an additional constraint here on, the, on theta. So by adaptivity, I mean that the, the parameters of the aforementioned minimax setup, this, this bonds on X and Y and on this theta, they're not used in this algorithm at all. And, and also, um, you can in some sense, in the hindsight, choose the most favorable minimax setup for your particular algorithm and establish uh, a matching upper and lower bound for it. So, so the main question that we consider in this paper is can we achieve something similar for, for differentially private linear regression? Can we have an adaptive uh, um, differentially private linear regression? Uh, adaptive to the, to the data, I mean. So um, very um, promisingly, um, when we uh, when we look at a, a simpler version of the problem, so, so let's try to specify the, the, uh, the domain of the space and uh, make sure that the, the data sets uh, are within the, within the bounds. You have this x uh, magnitude, uh, theta magnitude and y magnitude, uh, and, and you, you set them to be uh, uh, satisfying a relationship with each other uh, just, just for simplicity. Uh, then we can uh, just plot out uh, the relationship of uh, the, the minimax rate in the, in the private setting um, and as a function of n increasing with respect to, to, to powers of uh, the dimensionality. Okay, so what, what's drawn here in this figure in blue uh, is a non-private uh, lower bound that, that I, I presented earlier by, by Oha Shamir. Um, and, and suppose we consider the universe of all data sets that can be input into, the, in, into, into any algorithm that's differentially private, epsilon delta differentially private, then this red line uh, is a corresponding optimization lower bound 
um, and and upper bound uh, of this this algorithm. So this is the best you can achieve uh, um, because because of the privacy constraint, you can't actually find the ERM. But this is as far as uh, you, you 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 can get to. On the other hand, um, suppose we consider a subset of data sets. Like we don't typically typically do this to information privacy, but but suppose we consider a subset of data sets that are more well conditioned in a sense that the minimum eigenvalue of the covari empirical covariance metric is greater than something. We measure this by this parameter alpha star. And when alpha is like a normalized notion of minimum eigenvalue, um, if alpha star is one, it means the uh, x transpose x is, is orthogonal uh, or proportional to an orthogonal matrix. And when alpha star is zero, it means it's singular. So, 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 so if we uh, consider just this subset, then, then the lower bounds uh, for privately learn uh, this, this, this class theta um, becomes something that, that, that goes to zero uh, um, as n gets larger. Okay, in other words, when the optimization goes to zero faster than the statistical error, then essentially on this smaller class, we get privacy uh, for free asymptotically. There are two issues here. First, we don't know what the bound of this parameter space theta is, and we don't know how to set it. And, and we don't actually need this kind of thing for the non-private setting, so it's quite unsatisfactory. Secondly, uh, we can't design algorithms that just work for a subset of problem, because that's morally not correct. We can't just leave uh, those highly sensitive people uh, who really need privacy protections so like unprotected while focusing on the small subset of the population. So, um, what's, what's, what's really challenging for the uh, differentially private algorithm design uh, is this unbounded domain. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit. First of all, I'll consider the ordinary least square solution, theta star, that's just the pseudo inverse of x times this uh, label vector y. Um, when we do not assume theta uh, is bounded, uh, within a bounded space, uh, modifying, we, we can construct uh, adversarial data sets uh, such that when we modify the data set a little bit, uh, theta star can go from zero to somewhere that's, that's close to, to infinity, that's much, much larger. So the, the, the sensitivity of this function is, is not really bounded. Um, and secondly, uh, the loss function, uh, the square loss function uh, is neither Lipschitz because theta is not bounded, uh, quadratic functions can never be Lipschitz, uh, nor is it uh, bounded. Uh, lastly, it, the, the, the objective is not necessarily strongly convex because uh, x can be singular. So this managed to break most of the, the generic differentially private learning algorithm for solving uh, differentially private convex optimization and differentially private uh, empirical risk minimization. Okay, because uh, um, like, for instance, in output perturbation, we need Lipschitz and strong convexity. In objective perturbation, we need Lipschitzness, smoothness, and strong convexity. And, and in posterior sampling, um, so just this is just to get a sample from a posterior distribution, and when the loss is bounded, you can show that this is differentially private. Um, like, we also don't have boundedness in the loss. So a poor man's solution to this is to modify the problem itself and artificially add a bound in the search space and also add an additional regularization term uh, so things become um, strongly convex. This is a, a little bit limiting because we, first of all, we don't know how to, how to set these parameters. Secondly, um, like this does not actually take uh, advantage of properties of the data set and, and which could, could lead to inefficient use of uh, medical data that means people's lives. Um, so th there's another algorithm called sufficient statistics perturbation that has been um, proposed many years ago. Um, so the special case on linear regression involves just these three simple steps. First of all, uh, we construct the empirical, uh, an empirical estimate of the empirical covariance matrix by simply adding noise. Um, so we release this uh, uh, differentially privately. Second, we we release a, a projection of, uh, of y, uh, this label vector, 
uh, also differentially privately. So we don't need anything uh, about strong convexity or singularity of, uh, of, of a condition on X in order to, to do this uh, differentially private release. Then at the end of the day, uh, the SSP algorithm just uh, use a plug-in uh, estimator and construct this differentially private uh, output uh, set ahead. So we don't need uh, Lipschitz's strong convexity or bounded loss here, but uh, what's, what's, uh, it suffers from another pretty serious issue because whenever this matrix is nearly singular, adding noise would create a, a non-trivial mass around zero so that you, you, you sometimes can, when you do this inverse here, you can suffer from one, one over zero. And this output can get like really, really unstable. This is showing up in the data sets that, that we uh, considered. So on this data set, this yellow curve uh, corresponds to the output of the sufficient statistics perturbation. And this uh, purple curve corresponds to the previous approaches where we just artificially add a boundary and add a regularization term. So as we can see, uh, um, oh, but by the way, this, this red line is the non-private solution. Uh, and, and, and this blue line is simply outputting zero everywhere. So, so the sufficient statistics perturbation, although it's somewhat adaptive, like it doesn't actually solve the problem when the, when, when the data is nearly singular. Okay, so what, what we propose uh, um, is a very simple modification of the previous algorithm by uh, simply adding a, 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 um, a damping factor, lambda i here, so that it stabilizes everything. Um, the, the actual algorithm is more complicated because we need to add the regularization only when necessary. Uh, and, and we also need to add just enough regularization so that the additional bias that got introduced into the system is not going to outweigh the benefits that we, we are getting from, from, from the variance, uh, from the variance reduction that, 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 that this gives us. And, and the second algorithm we propose is an extension of the posterior sampling algorithm. So basically we can privately release the smallest eigenvalue uh, and then we can choose this uh, uh, two hyperparameters for the uh, posterior sampling algorithm. Um, and, and then we, we, um, we, we can like release a rigid regression uh, solutions magnitude so that we have an empirical version of the bond on the actual space that we need to search within. And lastly, we just sample from the posterior distribution. So this algorithm uh, is more general uh, than the previous one and its analysis is harder. Um, um, what, what the, the, the conclusions that we're getting for both algorithms is that they are able to attain uh, um, the corresponding lower bounds in the in a data adaptive fashion. So, so on top, we're looking at the two uh, known information theoretic limits for learning uh, differentially private uh, 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 linear, linear regression. And we have uh, this uh, domain bounds here. Uh, and there, and this alpha star is uh, the uh, well conditionedness uh, of of the uh, of of the data set universe, um, and both algorithms that we propose is managed to uh, adaptively uh, uh, attain okay the smaller of of, of these two. And the proof is interesting. I uh, I don't have time to talk about it, but. Uh, uh, if, if you're interested, feel free to, to look at the paper. Um, so so the, the, the idea is that effectively all we need to, to depend upon is a local Lipschitz constant rather than the, the global Lipschitz constant that holds everywhere in, in, the, uh, in the space. And this actually leads to significant improvements. Uh, um, as we can see, the two proposed algorithms uh, uh, in, in both cases would converge to the non-private uh, performance when epsilon is, is pretty reasonable. And it, it gives us like a, a few orders of magnitude improvements uh, over uh, baselines. And this is just two of the examples of the 36 data sets that we tested on, on, uh, on, on UCI. So out of the 36, on 30, 31 of them, uh, the, this other SSP outperform everything else. And the, on 20, 29 of them, this other, other OPS uh, is, is within the, uh, the, the two standard deviation of the best uh, alternative. 
And that particular number is only nine for, for, for the best of all our competitors. All right, so let me fast forward to the end. Take home messages. So unlike what you might have been told, uh, Differential privacy can be a very practical technology uh, and, and can be uh, the, the actual solution to the, to the privacy challenges that we face as a society. Um, and, and it can even be free as we demonstrated when the data set is nice. But what we really need to have is a data dependent algorithm and analysis for these algorithms uh, 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 so, so, so we can get the best out of the, the out, uh, the, the data that we have. Um, and the two proposed algorithms are, per instance, optimal, and it's also the best we can hope to get for the problem of differentially private linear regression. Um, and we have more uh, such data-dependent differential private algorithms that's coming out. So since this is UAI uh, community, I, I think privacy would imply there are uncertainty in the system, and how to quantify that uncertainty and how to leverage that uncertainty for for, for your favor and for the inferential purposes, uh, it's, a, it's a key uh, point of a study in differential privacy as well. So I think the UAI community can actually own uh, the research of uh, privacy. All right, thank you very much. The code is available.